for tuning in to Back to Health, the podcast that brings you up-to-the-minute information on the latest trends and breakthroughs in health, wellness, and medical care. Today's special episode is part of our Women's Health Wednesday series, which features in-depth conversations with Weill Cornell Medicine's top physicians on issues surrounding women's health throughout the life course. Listen here for the best information and insights that will help you make the most informed and best healthcare choices for you. I'm Melanie Cole, and we're delving into women's health and fitness today with Dr. Jacqueline Bonder. She's the medical director of women's health rehabilitation at Weill Cornell Medicine and New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell Medical Center, and she's an associate professor in the Department of Rehabilitation Medicine at Weill Cornell Medical College. Dr. Bonder, it's a pleasure to have you join us for these Women's Health Wednesdays, and what a great topic we're starting out with. I'd like you to reach out to women. Tell them the benefits of exercise in terms of disease prevention, feeling good. What does it even mean to get regular physical activity and how can it benefit really not only our physical health, but our overall health, our mental health, which is something that is really sorely lacking right now? Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm happy to tell you that exercise is a great passion of mine, and I've made it my career in terms of physical medicine and rehabilitation. Exercise is medicine is one of the things that I do like to say because of all of the great benefits it has in helping our physical well-being as well as our mental health well-being. From a physical standpoint, it helps build stronger bones. It also helps build stronger muscles. And more from a mental standpoint, it can reduce stress and help your mood. So there's lots of different ways to exercise and to affect things in that nature. And I'm excited to talk about it. And I think people don't realize, they think it's hard to start. Maybe motivation is an issue and you and I will talk about that a little bit too. But really, once you start, then it really makes you feel all those things that you were just talking about. Now, as far as disease prevention, diabetes, heart disease, which the number one killer of women is heart disease. What kinds of exercise do you want us to be looking at to do? Because there are so many different types across the spectrum, really. So I think that the answer is try to vary it up. I mean, I think that, you know, for cardiovascular health and preventing diabetes, you know, any type of exercise, but mostly physical activities such as aerobic exercise is probably going to help lower your blood sugar, lower your blood pressure, even keep your heart rate under control. And aerobic activity has really been shown to show that. But I also think it's really important to for people to prevent things like osteoporosis or low bone density by lifting weights, doing some walking, maybe some slow jogging, even dancing can be considered uh, weight-bearing exercise that's good for your bones. So varying it up is important. And lastly, the other piece of information to kind of include would be to think about you know, flexibility and thinking about balance, because as we get older and as women get older, they're more at risk for falls. And so we want to make sure that women don't fracture their bones. And so improving your balance will help you decrease your risk for falling as well as having better bone strength so that you're less likely to fracture if you do fall. So in summary, I think it's really important to kind of just vary it up. Do some walking one day, maybe some dancing another day, maybe a couple of days a week you can do some weightlifting and body weight training or strengthening and other days do some more yoga or Pilates type exercises. What good points you made. And thank you for telling us about the exercises for bone health because women don't realize our risk for osteoporosis grows as the decades grow. I'm 57, so I certainly have had my DEXA scan a couple of times now, but I can tell you that those are the exercises that really build that bone mineral density and help us to keep falls from causing fractures, really. So how much is enough? I think that's the question that I've received in so many years, more times than any other question that I can even think of is how much exercise, how much aerobic exercise, how much weight training, how much are we supposed to do? So, you know, I think that the benefits really of exercise are cumulative. Everyone can kind of vary their schedule in terms of activity, but I really think that about 30 minutes of exercise a day, and it doesn't have to be all at once, about five days a week is really looked at as to be most beneficial. If I tell people to do it seven days, they're not going to do it seven days. So if we suggest five days, hopefully they can do, you know, four days at least. But really four or five days of some 30-minute activity, whether it's 
a brisk walk or even just walking the dog. It can be considered physical activity. And then from a strength training standpoint, to kind of help build bones, doing some cardiovascular and aerobic activity twice a week, maybe some physical strengthening and weight training two times a week. And then that other day, kind of pick and choose, or maybe do a combination of some different types of exercise in one day. But really, the benefits have been shown that about 30 minutes of exercise over five days is really what's most beneficial. I think the other question I get the most is, how do I lose weight? How does exercise help somebody lose weight? So Dr. Bonder, what types of exercise will help somebody lose weight? And they're looking for fat loss. They're looking for all that stuff. Tell us about that. So for weight loss purposes, we usually tell people to turn to starting with aerobic and cardiovascular exercise. That's the exercise that gets your breathing rate up, your heart rate up, um, and helps burn calories. So you really want to start to kind of full progress if you're a new exerciser, slowly progress in a cardiovascular program at least three or four times a week. Even with trying to lose weight, you want to vary it up. So 20 minutes of high intensity exercise maybe, or a goal of getting, let's say, I don't want to tell everyone to just go start doing 20 minutes of high intensity exercise. You want to kind of work up to that point. 20 minutes of high intensity though can sometimes produce the same amounts of 30 minutes of moderate activity. So it really about the exercises that you choose. And so we know that something like high intensity interval training, which is a combination of doing some quick high intensity, like, you know, running, running in place, jumping jacks activity for 20 seconds, followed by 10 seconds of rest and doing that for 15, 20 minutes is almost equal to doing 30 minutes of moderate walking. So it really depends on your health status, right? So, you know, if you already have some health conditions like arthritis or maybe even bone density issues, you want to be careful with all the the pressure you will put on your bones and your joints. So tell someone to focus more on the low impact exercise, as we like to call it, low impact exercise. There's always a foot on the ground. With low impact exercise, usually is one foot on the ground. High impact exercise, usually at some point you have two feet off the ground is sometimes a way to think about it and be able to tell the difference between the two. But going back to the weight loss idea is that even for weight loss, we want to build muscle too. Building muscle helps us burn calories when we're not exercising. So the higher your muscle mass is, the more you're going to burn calories when you're not actually doing some exercise. So that's why we kind of really encourage both as a part of it. Now, what about daily tasks then? I I can tell you when I'm gardening, Dr. Bonder, I feel like I've gotten a really, really good workout in. And sometimes it makes it so there's not a lot of other exercise, formal exercise I can do. Can we count daily tasks as exercise? Yes, absolutely. I've alluded to it a little bit before, you know, things like walking. If you have a dog or want to get a dog, it's a great way to get your exercise in. But even some household chores really can be low impact type exercise, getting down on the floor, (laughs) scrubbing floors or even sweeping, all of those kinds of things can really get your your heart rate up when you're doing it. So uh, I definitely would count that one day a week if you're saying I'm going to clean my home and I'm going to walk up the stairs three times, go back and forth to clean up the, the bedrooms, then you're getting it in. So I definitely think that you can include that. You know, standing is also a great way to get some exercise in and think about burning some extra calories. Anything that you're doing, you're sitting, talking on the phone. I mean, right now, we could be standing and talking as opposed to sitting and talking. And when you stand, you burn more active calories than sitting. So many of us have been home, especially with sitting at a computer during this time, that we can think about standing a couple more times during the day. You'll burn some extra calories, too. These are all such great tips. And As we get ready to wrap up this really informative episode, Dr. Bonder, people don't know how to get started. And certainly with COVID, a lot of us sat around, maybe got deconditioned. So setting those goals, because I think SMART goals are one of the best ways. If you just jump into it, you never quite know whether you're going to keep that motivation going. But when you've got those goals and you're looking towards something, it helps to keep you moving forward. So I would like you to tell us how to set those goals, how to keep those goals, and how to stay motivated for our Women's Health Wednesdays, Women's Health and Fitness. 
So I think that setting goals is really important. I think from a standpoint of just first starting to exercise, if you haven't been exercising in a while, you know, start slow. Make a goal that you're going to walk or do some sort of light exercise for five to 10 minutes a day and slowly progress up to 30 minutes. It's hard to do 30 minutes and it's harder than most people realize. So one goal that's easy to set is to say, I'm not going to do this fast. This is going to go slow and that's okay. Basically start with five or 10 minutes and kind of slowly progress. Another really good goal is partner with a friend or even a colleague that you can be accountable to each other and kind of setting goals together and so that you feel like you're doing it with somebody and you're not alone and that helps our mental health as well in terms of just being with someone and and the social interaction of that. And so I think that it can be important to help set goals with another person. And then in terms of goals, I think that you want to set realistic ones. So choose the right weight that is going to be good for you. A good rule of thumb is to say the weight I'm going to start with is the weight I feel really tired after about 10, maybe 15 repetitions of a curl or a bicep curl or a tricep exercise or something like that, any of those weight training exercises that you may start to learn, pick up a weight that feels tired and then say, okay, my goal is over the next six months. Don't make such lofty goals. Goals that are too high are going to be really difficult to achieve. And so we want to kind of set them on the lower side so that you can go slow and then you can achieve those goals. My last piece of advice is form. Proper form when you exercise is the best way to prevent injury, but also get the most benefit out of an exercise. So if you're not doing it correctly, that's when you're going to get hurt and you're not going to get the benefit from it. So whether you're walking, running, weightlifting or anything, and you're not sure if you're doing it correctly, talk to to somebody, either your doctor, a friend that might be an expert, an exercise physiologist, a physical therapist, so many people that know about how to exercise properly, because I think that that's a really important point to kind of prevent injury, but also see your goals achieved. Absolutely great information. Thank you so much, Dr. Bonder, for joining us today. And we're so glad, listeners, that you joined us for Women's Health Wednesday. We hope you'll tune in and become part of a community and a fast-growing audience of women looking for knowledge, insight, and real answers to hard questions about their bodies and their health. Please download, subscribe, rate, and review Back to Health on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. For more health tips, go to wildcornell.org and search podcasts. And parents, remember to check out our Kids HealthCast, too. I'm Melanie Cole. Thanks so much for tuning in. Tuning in. Rehabilitation medicine can help patients with a wide array of disorders and diseases, including cancer. If cancer care is of interest, listen to Cancer Cast, while Cornell Medicine's dedicated oncology podcast featuring leaders in the field and patient stories. Cancer Cast highlights dynamic discussions about the exciting developments in oncology. All information contained in this podcast is intended for informational and educational purposes. The information is not intended nor suited to be a replacement or substitute for professional medical treatment or for professional medical advice relative to a specific medical question or condition. We urge you to always seek the advice of your physician or medical professional with respect to your medical condition or questions. While Cornell Medicine makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast, and any reliance on such information is done at your own risk. Participants may have consulting, equity, board membership or other relationships with pharmaceutical, biotech, or device companies unrelated to their role in this podcast. No payments have been made by any company to endorse any treatments, devices, or procedures. And while Cornell Medicine does not endorse, approve, or recommend any product, service, or entity mentioned in this podcast, opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the speaker and do not represent the perspectives of Wild Cornell Medicine as an institution.